the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Holy and loving God, write a message on our hearts. Bless us, direct us, and send us out, living letters of the word. Amen. Please be seated. I am the world's worst soccer player. I know this is a surprising revelation considering my chiseled physique. Perhaps I'm not the world's worst but I certainly rank high up there in the pantheon of really bad players. So in keeping with my level of skill and affinity, I chose to play soccer for my entire middle and high school career. I give credit where credit is due. My classmates were inordinately kind, and I was blessed with coaches who were incredibly patient and welcoming, despite the negative impact I would have on the team's probability of winning. And I would say that my soccer skills did improve over time, and by my senior year, I had probably moved from generally abysmal to moderately horrific. I did score one goal once. We were playing a really bad team. And near the end of the first half, I received a pass near the top of the 18-yard box, and I set up my shot, and I sent one soaring over the goalie's head and just under the crossbar and right into the upper corner of the goal. My dad went nuts. <laughs> and my coach yelled in good humor, where did that come from? That is the sum total of my athletic career, one point. Truly a singular achievement. Singular, one point, get it? Sorry. Thank you so much. As you might imagine, when we weren't playing really bad teams, I spent a lot of time on the bench observing my teammates. My teammates were quite good, combining God-given talents and obvious hard work and practice. But the best players, the players who won the MVP awards and were selected for the all-county teams, they were not only the best individual athletes, but they were also the best teammates. The best were leaders as well as athletes, and their leadership not only scored goals, but enabled others around them to achieve as well. If one of these of the best were on the field, the whole team improved. And these players, these captains, these leaders, their model for achievement can be applied in other aspects of our daily life, in the home, in the workplace, in school, or at church. And in the church, I would name these leaders saints. On this All Saints Sunday, we remember and honor much. We remember and give praise for the big saints, the saints with a capital S, 
those men and women that lived a hundred if not thousands of years ago who wore flowing robes and ate wild locusts and wild honey and are celebrated in mosaic and in legend. We recall tales of their lives and virtue, their lives of prophecy, their lives of service, and their lives of accomplishment. And on this All Saints, we give thanks for those individuals and all they gave to the church. Moreover, on this All Saints Sunday, we remember the saints that we know and love that have gone on to their next life with God. Those saints may never be immortalized in stained glass, but their light shines in our hearts and will do so for eternity. And our remembrance does not need to be sorrowful. If you read my reflection in the Dove last Wednesday, which I know all of you did, I mentioned that on All Saints, or on any day for that matter, that matter, we can particularly remember those saints who are dear to us in the celebration of the Eucharist. For at that holy table, we are inexorably linked to the great throng of saints that preceded us and will succeed us. At that table, we, we, as we sang in our opening hymn, Earth's wide bounds are at one with ocean's farthest coast. At that table, we join with them in the heavenly feast that will last unto the ages of ages. This All Saints, I hope we remember with both tears and laughter our own saints who have entered into that eternal throng. But most importantly, on this All Saints Sunday, we celebrate how we are called to be saints. Through our creation in the image of, bap of God and in our adoption through the waters of baptism, all of us are called to be saints. Precious Teddy, who we will baptize in just a few moments, is called to be a saint. And you and I are called to be saints. However, we are not meant to be saints who stand alone and bask in our individual virtue. Instead, if we are the best saints, the most effective saints, we work together. Together, like those elite athletes who enable an entire team to play better, we can do a lot more and engage so many more together. Porter Taylor, the former bishop of Western North Carolina, once wrote, our growth into the likeness of Christ is corporate. We are not alone. We are not singular. We are not rocks. We are not islands. We are together. As we will pray in the Eucharistic prayer this morning, for in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Or as the band Wilco once sang, Jesus, don't cry, you can rely on me. As saints, we are called to do nothing less than the work of God, to bring about the reign of God, and to be agents of healing and hope in a broken world. And merely approaching these needs, let alone succeeding in these tasks, would be impossible on our own. But as saints, together, there is no telling what we could do. For together we can do anything. For we are all saints. Amen.